ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to arcane chemical industries limited q2 and h1 fy25 results conference call this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr ranjit pandurthi from rkn please go ahead sir thank you good afternoon everyone we wish you all a very warm welcome to our q2 and h1 fy25 earnings call today we are joined by mr raghunathan our cfo mr rajiv kumar dgm finance and sga our investor relations advisor i hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation which has been uploaded on the stock exchange and our company website I will give you all a quick snapshot on the recent developments of the company. Post that, Mr. Raghunathan will walk you through the operational and financial performance of the company. Thank you. The past quarter has been quite vibrant for the leadership team as multiple projects have witnessed healthy progress. The company has reached an inflection point, taking decisive steps to de- diversify and de-risk its product portfolio. This strategy reflects extensive planning, dedication and adaptability from the entire team at the company as we navigate evolving needs of the market. At the heart of this journey is also our R&D initiatives, a cornerstone of our efforts working tirelessly to drive breakthroughs in chemistry and expand into new downstream markets. Artin Chemical Industries Limited stands out as a prominent manufacturer of marine specialty chemicals. such as elemental bromine a grade industrial salt and sulfate of potash through natural sea brine as most of you are aware however your company is poised for expansion by disrupting and capitalizing on synergies between its core business of marine specialty chemicals and its strategic investments in high growth sectors such as compound semiconductors and energy storage solutions However, the core business remains the mainstay of the company's growth strategy for the next few quarters and years. Coming to the performance highlights and the recent developments on respective products are as follows. Firstly, elemental bromine. It has been a somewhat of a mixed quarter for the company as we have seen some broad recovery on the demand side, primarily from the domestic market, whereas demand from export market remains a bit soft. We expect steady demand on the bromine business with end use applications either stable or recovering. With the recent stimulus in the Chinese market, we foresee China economy to pick up gradually and the demand for our key products to recover as well. We aim to produce in excess of 20,000 metric tons for the year of bromine including requirements for our own use. Second, industrial salt Industrial salt faced a bit of a challenge in Q2 FY25 primarily due to the monsoon season as you all know which was quite extended and extensive in terms of rainfall as you all also may be aware the second quarter typically is a slow quarter for us as the export business remains a bit affected by monsoon the prolonged time required to finish product coupled with difficult transport road conditions made exports from a site to the ports very difficult the company also faced a temporary challenge as cyclone asna dropped quite a bit of heavy rain and disrupted operations at the production site however due to the effort of the team we continued to operate despite this cyclone this however did lead to some inventory damage especially on the industrial salt side as highlighted earlier we have over 300 trucks involved in loading and unloading from our stockyards for export to the ports 
hence overall volume stood at 7.5 lakh tons for the quarter h2 is generally better for business and we expect more than a million ton volume run rate in the coming quarters our focus will be on enhancing processes and cost efficiencies while we have historically concentrated on exports we have started exploring new opportunities to meet growing domestic demand on in salt as well third sulfur potash on the sop side we continue to see encouraging results in our clients and we have also taken steps to produce a second grade of sulfate of potash which we are seeing encouraging inquiries from both global and domestic markets at present it is a work in progress and we expect meaningful contributions in the next year coming to acum a subsidiary for bromine derivative products such as clear brand fluids and pta synthesis products clear brand fluids the initial response on CBF is encouraging and we have already dispatched dispatched a few trials and small orders to clients we are actively engaging with clients to conduct further trials and define their specific requirements <coughs> so we have seen some favorable progress in these products and expect a healthy contribution in coming quarters on the pta synthesis side polyester derived from pta synthesis has extensive applications across various industries particularly in textiles and packaging as the industry grows and the economy is expand and and the polymer usage rises we anticipate growing demand for the pta synthesis products to support these industries oren hydrocarbon after receiving the nclt order in the month of july 24 our team has been actively working on refurbishments and renovations at various production sites of the company we expect two plants to be fully operational within the next few weeks with meaningful business contributions and anticipated from the q4 of this financial year this these sites are strategic for future growth enabling us to expand our product offerings by adding specialty mud chemicals and cbf products to serve clients in the oil and gas and drilling industry which with the recent turn of events appears to be a uh, more attractive or has a more attractive future and a more comprehensive portfolio for your company investments in classic wafer fab limited uk a uk based company specializing in silicon carbide mosfets and device manufacturing your company will be investing to the tune of gbp 15 million for the 21.33% equity share capital with primary subscription of 10 million pounds and secondary purchase of 5 million pounds as a part of this diversification strategy acl is making strategic investments in classic wafer fab limited a uk based dedicated silicon carbide wafer foundry with manufacturing capability for sic devices this investment aligns with the company's broader semiconductor initiative through 6m private limited and secures technology exclusivity in india it is a it is a moment of pride for your company as we are the first indian company to invest in a company with silicon carbide mosfets devices production capability and will be in the future serving industries like electric vehicles renewable energy systems industrial power electronics data centers etc in both domestic and export markets acil's core competency in specialty chemicals creates natural synergies with its sic semiconductor business the road map from concept to commercialization will take between 2 to 3 years as a part of the first phase of this new initiative investment in off grid energy labs inc delaware us an ip led company specializing in zinc bromide battery technology we will invest nearly usd 12 million in series a fund for the subscription of 21% stake this investment aligns with acl's broader strategy to enter the energy storage sector particularly focusing on applications in renewable energy industry storage etc the company's bromine business has a direct synergy with zinc gel batteries which use zinc bromide chemistry for the battery zinc gel scope zinc bromide batteries offer superior cycle life safety and cost effectiveness when compared to existing battery technologies in the market making them ideal for daily discharge charge cycles in commercial and industrial solar applications as well as utility scale grid stability projects 
We will initially support the establishment of a pilot manufacturing facility in the UK with an intention to establish a giga factory in India in the near future to scale to scale up the zinc bromide battery production. Again, roadmap from concept to commercialization will take two years time and will we will obviously keep our shareholders updated in due course. Update on the existing capacity expansion. Our company has built a solid foundation over the years in the marine chemicals industry, positioning us well to leverage our expertise in bromine derivative products and new incoming products. Our primary focus continues to remain on establishing lasting collaborations with all customers across all products. We are confident and remain confident to, remain, to grow gradually in the coming years and will be well equipped to utilize the opportunities that keep evolving with the market as well. That's it from my side on the update. Now I will hand over to Mr. Raghunathan, our CFO, to run through the financial performance. Thank you, sir. Uh, and good afternoon to all the participants on the call. To give you a financial summary of Q2 of FI25 on a standalone basis, uh, company registered a total revenue of uh, around 2,521 million. However, there's a drop of around 17% on a way on way basis. The drop is primarily due to logistics related challenges, which MD also has indicated in this stage. The uh, export market contributed around 77%, and the remaining 23% uh, came from the domestic market. Uh, this overall revenue, bromine contributed around 38%. And the industrial salt. Sorry for the interruption, sir. May I request you to please come closer to the mic? Your, mic, your voice is a little muffled. Sure, sure, Tanya. Thank Amit, you, sir. Okay, uh, bromine contributed around 38% of the total revenue, and industrial salt is around 62%. EBITDA for the company stood at around 898 million for this quarter, Q2, with a margin of 36%, and net profit stood at around 219 million. We also want to inform you that in this Q2 results, we reported an exceptional item due to the impact of Asana cyclone in Gujarat uh, that occurred in the month of August end and beginning of September. So almost it prevailed for more than uh, a week or so, which resulted in a loss of around 472,000 metric tons of industrial salt, which amounts to around 40.18 crores. We have initiated a necessary uh, claim process with uh, respective insurance companies. You know, moving on to H1 uh, results, total revenue for uh, the H1 FI25 stood at around 4,754 million. There's a drop of around 28% on a way on way basis. Export market contributed around 75%. The remaining 25% came from the domestic market. Roman contributed around 41% of the total revenue, and industrial salt is at around 49%. EBITDA for the company stood at around 1,747 million for the six months period with a margin at 37%. Net profit was around 703 million. So with this, I conclude the speech and I open the floor for Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aditya Ketan from Smith's Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Sir, first question is on to the salt business. Uh, sir, into your initial commentary, you have stated that you are expecting uh, so uh, around 10 lakh ton of salt volumes run rate quarterly. So in this... Uh, Assumptions are so we are taking all all the problems to be resolving like the uh, so the Red Sea crisis which was impacting us and was uh, secondly uh, so there was some one-off issue in last quarter also in this quarter also there is a one-off so all these issues seems to be resolving so from the next quarter itself so 
this is Ranjit here. So thank you for your question. So I think um, a lot of our salt business, in fact, I would say majority of it, if not all of it, is focused on uh, the Far East and Asian exports. So the Red Sea crisis as such, I don't think has uh, too much of an impact, maybe a little bit on the freight uh, because that's a global uh, industry. But having said that, I think our customer demand remains intact, our long-term contracts remain intact, and we continue shipping under those contracts. In the last quarter, there were some delays, uh, which obviously we adjusted with the customers. But uh, as such, uh, we don't see any impact uh, going forward. And as you rightly put, uh, I think the last quarter was a one-off. Uh, we do have sufficient uh, stocks, uh, and uh, none of our contracts have been uh, um, cancelled. Uh, we've only taken some adjustment in the delivery dates in the last quarter, but now things are back on track and the shipments uh, are being done as per the delivery schedules committed to customers. Got it, sir. Thank you, sir, for that. Uh, so my second question is on to the booming part. Uh, sir, into the domestic market, we had witnessed that some of uh, uh, so some of the new players have also expanded the capacity. And uh, so they are planning up with a big, uh, so they are coming up with a big capacity in, in the next two to three years. And into your initial commentary, you have stated that the, uh, so the recovery in the domestic market is good and the export market remains soft. So with this new capacity is coming in, uh, so don't you feel the competitive intensity would go up in, in, in domestic also? Well, I think I have said this on earlier occasions as well. The uh, competition, you know, is bound to happen in any industry. You can only be a, a first-time entrant uh, when you discover something new. And I think that's been our uh, position um, till now. And uh, while the local uh, other players expand, I think part of our de-risking and diversification into further value-enhanced chemistries and products I think uh, this was envisaged a couple of years ago, which is what we have implemented. So I think I credit the uh, management team and also our on the ground, you know, team, site team for uh, implementing these uh, uh, projects. And I think uh, this will probably add to our strength and distinguish us or differentiate us from other players. Okay. So, but the market of, of brooming that still remains subdued only. For the last uh, six to eight months, we had witnessed that the price also have been normalized and it is trading at uh, at the lowest levels. And there is no recovery which is seen in demand in the global markets. So, what is the outlook for the next two to three years? Uh, so, you see now the pain is over and with ramp up of volumes, we can see uh, so better days ahead. And what would be the guidance of volumes for FI25 and FI26? So I personally refrain from saying the worst is behind us uh, because I think uh, the global market is evolving in ways that most of us have not anticipated or seen. Um, so I think we have to be uh, taking a step at a time. What we need to focus on is what we are doing. I think our uh, volumes in Bromine certainly uh, need to pick up. We have the capacity, we have the customers. Uh, these are relationships that are almost a decade old on the export side and the domestic side as well. So one of the, I think, encouraging things is that even the local players on the end-user industries are expanding. Uh, China is stabilizing. Uh, are we in a comfortable position from uh, a market growth perspective? I think we are not there yet. But at the same time, as a company, uh, are we in a position you know, that uh, where we believe that what we make, we can sell. I think we can, and we are doing that. And sir, what would be the expected volumes for, for so for booming? We can touch for 25. I think, uh, as I mentioned in my commentary, I think we're aiming at in excess of 20,000 tons per year. So hopefully, you know, I think uh, we are working uh, diligently towards uh, crossing that figure comfortably. Got it. Perfect. So my third question is on to the TBF and, uh, and uh, on to the PTA synthesis business. Uh, how is the ramp up, sir, over there? And uh, uh, is it possible to share the volume figure for these two businesses? So I, I'll speak about the ramp up. 
I think the ramp up has been uh, uh, satisfactory. Uh, obviously, we can always do a better job than we have done in the last uh, couple of quarters. Uh, but it's taking a bit of time because oil and gas industry, uh, drilling industry, you know, is also subject to a lot of uh, global uh, factors. But at the same time, I think uh, the uh, industry on the oil and gas drilling side, I think, remains healthy. And with recent events in the US, etc., we think this will continue to, you know, uh, be a good area. Uh, I think markets like the US probably, you know, given their re-emphasis on more drilling, uh, I think will be good for the company in, in terms of the product portfolio that we are building. So I believe that, you know, I think we're in a good position. And uh, like I said, the trials I think we've conducted with certain customers for end-user industries have been encouraging. Most of them have passed. Um, so we're adding more products, even with ore and hydrocarbon acquisition. Uh, those plants are getting refurbished or renovated. And I think those products also will add to a bigger basket to cater the uh, oil and gas drilling industry. And on the other derivative side, I think we are making progress, uh, non-oil and gas, like PTA synthesis, etc. And I think we've started uh, shipping out and exporting some volumes. So overall, the trend is, I think, encouraging, but we have to keep at it. I don't think we can take it easy. Uh, we need to keep pushing, and that's what we are doing. And so the, uh, so the expansion, uh, which we were planning earlier, Maybe request sorry, you return to the question queue for no. follow-up questions as there sure. are several participants waiting for their turn. Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Rushab from RBSA Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, sir. Thank you. So we are, we are planning to start manufacturing of these high-quality SSE-powered devices in the next two to three years. So we just give a sense what is the domestic market size of these products and what is the targeted return on capital that you know targeting, including the incentives that we may get from the government. Well, I think the subject is quite large to take on a, on a short earnings call. Um, so, but I will probably uh, defer it to Rajiv. Um, and maybe Rajiv can answer this question as best as he can. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Rusha, for the question. Um, the first part of the question was the domestic market size. So, uh, SIC devices uh, or compound semiconductor devices, the market is growing. Um, right now, uh, overall global market size would be around two to three billion dollar. And we expect this to grow at a very uh, good uh, CAGR of more than 25% till 2830. So we do expect that in next five to six years, the market will increase uh, from the current size of $2 billion to more than $10 billion. Um, the second part of your question, uh, did you ask the government support for this? If I'm, I'm asking the targeted return on capital on this uh, manufacturing uh, venture. So, so Rusab, I, I think we will wait to answer this, maybe uh, a couple of months, because uh, while we have stitched together the project plan, we have submitted it to government and waiting for the necessary approvals. So uh, a lot of that will depend on what quantum of uh, the government incentives, et cetera, we get, which will have an impact on, on the return ratios. So we, we will uh, definitely answer the return ratios once we get the clarity on the uh, approval process. And just second question, just on the broad semicon initiative, uh, where other companies also in talks to acquire, you know, stake in this classic wafer fab. You know, why did the company choose us and why did we choose them? I just want to understand the thought process here. No, so the thought process is uh, uh, we have uh, uh, seen and we have been at this uh, classic initiative, uh, investment initiative for a few months now. Right now, we have the exclusivity of uh, the technology agreement in India, which will continue uh, to be so. Okay. And so this uh, regarding in investment in this off-grid ventures, uh, we have an invested capital. So uh, did we give exit to existing investors? I believe there are already existing set of investors there. Or is this just a fresh capital infusion? No, this is just primary infusion. Okay. And just last question, if I want to ask, you had Mr. Kannan as a senior leadership uh, team sometime back. Just for notice, what is the mandate given to him? Is it for the bromine derivatives or the marine chemicals uh, or new product development? 
so if i can take that question so uh, mr kannan has uh, joined us you know as executive director in arkin chemical industries which is the parent company for all the subsidies that we have talked about today so uh, the broad mandate for him is uh, leading and uh, being responsible for all these initiatives including the primary company arkin chemical industries okay so thank you all the best thank you very much the next question is from the line of archit joshi from bnk securities please go ahead uh, hi good afternoon sir and thanks for the opportunity uh, so my first one on uh, the silicon carbide uh, investment uh, we also had uh, uh, some uh, research funding that we gave to iit bhuvaneswar i think a quarter ago we had stated about that uh now with these two investments in place uh, what are the synergies we are trying to derive because i think the technology uh, has already been established in uk where we have invested around 21% uh, so is there a plan to bring that technology to india uh, uh, and how would uh, the research funding that we have given help us in any way and on if you could slightly elaborate a bit more on uh, maybe the 3 to 5 year outlook on uh this particular venture how 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 will it shape up if you can answer those thank you sure so i think uh, as you know you know the semiconductor industry is a large industry right so right. uh choosing technologies finding partnerships and getting someone to share the technology is not a very straightforward or easy process our uh, the company that we tied up with in the uk and have taken the equity stake is precisely to do that now we have access to not just the current generation technology but we also have access to ongoing future improvements and future technologies as well so that's the most fundamental thing that you need to look at when you look at investing in something like this in this industry right it's just not about today but it's about you know years down the line the capability to deliver on changing technology updated technology and having access to it most important so we have been able to secure that the second thing is uh, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, synergy with uh, iit bhuvaneswar initiative so we have taken a bit of a different approach we are working with iit bhuvaneswar on the research part of actually making silicon carbide crystal right and right. this i think is been pioneered within india and uh, no one has done it uh, and very few i think have done this uh, globally as a comprehensive combined effort within the semiconductor industry in terms of a company doing the silicon carbide as well crystal growth so we are trying to marry the tech, the research initiative with the commercial aspects of developing the silicon carbide wafer fab so with the synergy will come from having our own silicon carbide crystal growth as well as being able to deliver on the wafer fab you know with uh, the plastic uh, investment and tie up on technology for india Sure, sir. Uh, sir, this twenty-one percent stake uh, that we have done in UK uh, does that give enough access from a pure percentage uh, perspective? That, or maybe there would be further investments required to uh, kind of take a much better control of uh, those assets or th- or that particular venture, so as to have a better synergy uh, in and around the semiconductor industry in India. so i think at the moment our focus is on access uh, as i mentioned it's not about control uh, we have a very good relationship with the uk company and i think our our uh, tie up provides for current and future access to technology and uh, uh, we don't foresee uh, any more investments uh, into the uh, equity side um, i think we have got what we wanted in first phase but uh, i i can't comment about what the future holds uh, you know as things may change as things may develop um, we we probably will be you know the first in line to see if any other productive uh, relationship will happen but at the moment i think we are restricting ourselves to what we've done already uh, sure sir uh, so just coming back to uh, the base business uh, i think we definitely had some ambitions to have uh, flame retardants in our domain derivatives portfolio has that been derailed uh, for other nearer term or have we 
have have we had any closure on that account any expectations that we can build in to our numbers i think it's a commercial call uh, it's not derailed for sure i think it's delayed as i mentioned i think on the previous calls as well i um, you know it's easy to always uh, put capital uh, but i think we want to take a measured approach uh, as someone else asked earlier on the call uh, it's about return on capital invested so we only have a couple of initiatives going on we'd like to first deliver on these and then i think the access to frame retardant and the technology and the market will always be available to us so we always have a continuous dialogue uh, with the partners on this um, because having uh, our own drone is our strength uh, even if not now we can always look at uh, doing uh, the flame retardants you know in the near future but uh, it is definitely not delayed i would say that you know it's uh, delayed sir sir uh, one last on the base business before i come back in the queue Uh, sir, uh, if you can share in Mr. your Ashish, opinion, uh, please. May I request you to return the question queue for follow-up questions? As there are sure, several sure. other participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So first question again on the uh, silicon wafer initiative. So we have mentioned that uh, we are targeting uh, to manufacture these devices over the next twenty four thirty six months. So is this going to be an exclusive manufacturing uh, by uh, us only for any requirement uh, of the entire company? Despite we are having maybe twenty one percent stake as of now. Thank you. i'm going to answer this question uh in a manner that i've understood it so please correct me if i if i'm wrong in my understanding we are going it's going to be a commercial enterprise that's going to manufacture for india and for the global market india first of course because our need within our country is uh, is already there um and this is going to be sold manufactured by our subsidiary Fully owned and and uh, commercially sold to you know the market. Um, there's nothing captive about this industry, but as we're also aware, uh, a lot of this depends on uh, you know in what kind of uh, as Rajiv, my colleague, mentioned on uh, government incentive and support, which we are hopeful you know of of uh, getting um, because um, that is also critical. all right just a clarification so we will be having the exclusive manufacturing rights uh, in india and then distribution across india as well as other markets is that correct understand yeah so the so the agreement is only on the exclusivity of the technology tie up uh, for india in terms of manufacturing and sale uh, it's not bound by any agreement that's purely our, our company's uh, prerogative Okay, fair. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, second, again on the uh, second acquisition, the off-grid energy labs. Uh, here too, we have a similar kind of uh, arrangement that we will be uh, doing the uh, you know manufacturing on an exclusive basis as far as Indian market is concerned. The investment in off-grid is a bit different. Uh, it is not. It's about pure ownership. uh into the company because uh as you said you know the synergy between zinc bromide and our bromine business so here i think uh we are taking a different position we will have the opportunity and access to the technology to manufacture you know uh, of set up uh visa battery uh, facilities and ultimately as shareholders or investors as you can call it uh, we are free to also license uh, the technology to others in other countries to set up uh, similar uh, Giga factories. Uh, so we will be uh, getting uh, probably a royalty uh, from this initiative uh, wherever we are uh, selling or distributing the technology to other players. I would I would largely think so. Uh, I think I would maybe call it uh, like a licensing royalty fee. Right. And just one last. Uh, I I think it's a bit premature to structure uh, that. I'm just broadly saying because there could be various combinations of how. we benefit with somebody setting up the factory it could be licensing royalty it could be also on sales so i think that structure you know will evolve uh, as and when we finish our pilot plant and and we get to you know uh, demonstrate the commercial scale 
which you're on track to do. Fair, uh, that's understanding. Uh, just one small suggestion. Uh, we had this exceptional item during this, uh, you know, after the Q2 numbers. However, it occurred sometime in the month of August and September. So just a suggestion if we can give it uh, as a good corporate governance practice to, uh, you know, share this particular detail so that it doesn't become a surprise element only uh, during the results. So just a suggestion from my side. Uh, thanks a lot for answering all the questions and all the best. I think absolutely noted. I think uh, the difficulty with uh, something like salt is it dissolves in water, and and it takes us some time to precisely understand, you know, the extent of the loss. So we got around to being able to only quantify this. I think uh, during the uh, audit time for the Q2 numbers. Um, so uh, we've taken the necessary steps accordingly, you know, in terms of uh, information. Uh, but point noted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Krishan Parvani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, can you please give sales volume uh, breakup of bromine salt and SOB for this quarter? Uh, yeah, for, for this quarter Q2, uh, the sale of salt is around uh, 792,000 mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, 976 in the previous year's quarter. And with respect to bromine, it's around 4,800 plus. 4,800, okay. And SOP nil? SOP is, um, uh, SOP is at around 27, 27 times. Okay. And, and just to follow up on that, I think uh, uh, in the initial remark, Ranjit mentioned that bromine production of 20,000 tons is planned for this fiscal. And I think you've already sold close to 9,500. That means very limited divergence to derivatives. So when do you expect this to pick up? And, and what is the admissage bromine production for next fiscal? So I think uh, the 20,000 uh, will include some part of our captive uh, production, uh, sorry, production as well. Um, so I've not uh, differentiated uh, between uh, captive and uh, third party sale, uh, which also is the reason why I said, you know, we, we are trying to push uh, to volume beyond 20,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, for next year, uh, Raghunam said, do we have a projection? So next year are likely to be at around the 20, 25,000 tons. Okay, got it. And uh, secondly, uh, so I think with the uh, new investments that you have done, so uh, can you please highlight the uh, picks uh, for let's say various ongoing projects, including the new investment for this and the next year? The total outflow, I mean, if you can uh, highlight the K uh, investment in the CAPEX. I think our initial year, you know, uh, after this uh, outflow of investment on the equity side, uh, for the next uh, six months, um, we don't see too much of uh, CapEx, apart from what we're doing with Oren. Um, I think maybe uh, I would broadly put uh, with existing uh, initiatives, uh, probably, you know, we would probably be between 50 to 75 crores uh, uh, over the next uh, six months at the very most. Um, the newer initiatives, I think, uh, will probably extend beyond that, beyond the six-month time frame. Uh, in the next six months, we don't anticipate any large uh, capex. Okay, so for this fiscal, probably whatever that uh, investment that you have done and uh, uh, 60, 70 crores for the ore and hydrocarbon, that's it. Or is there anything else that we have missed? No, and the derivatives. Just finishing, and derivatives. Yes, I would say until March, I think that's a very uh, generous uh, number to take. So for derivatives, how much should we take? Should we take 70, 80 crores, or should we take more like 120 no, crores? I think. I, no, 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 no. I would say no. Derivatives are almost uh, finished with the capex. There's not much lens left. Uh, so that's why I said it's a very generous number. I would say between 50 and 75 till March. Not definitely not more than that. Got it. Uh, thank you for patiently answering my questions and wish you all the best for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sunaina Chabria from Chola Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. 
So I have a couple of questions first relating to the new ventures that are there. So with Offgrid Energy Labs, uh, what is the estimated market size that uh, uh, that is there globally and in India? And the clients that you all are wishing to service, uh, are these in collaboration with Offgrid or would, these, would this be separate? And are you also planning to further invest in the company? And my uh, second and the question and the further question is, uh, what would be like the profit sharing over here or some kind of return on investment if you could guide? Okay. So I'll uh, maybe uh, Rajiv, you can take the question. Okay. And also mention the existing investors in Offgrid. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So uh, the first part of your question, Sunaina, was on the market size. Yeah. Uh, the current uh, market size for uh, this uh, energy storage is, is quite huge. It, it is uh, estimated around $25 billion globally uh, and expected to grow over the year. Um, also, in the energy storage, stationary energy storage market is growing at a great pace in India. Uh, just to give you a reference, uh, last year alone in FY24, uh, 7 gigawatt hour of storage were awarded, which is roughly around a uh, billion dollars. Our investment in uh, off-grid is, is strategic in the sense right now, uh, and, and this was all answered by our MD uh, previously also, that uh, the return ratio or expectation or the mechanics in which we will uh, get the return is still not something which has been finalized. Right now, the aim is to uh, enable off-grid to make uh, the pilot plant, which will uh, uh, help them creating a blueprint for a gigafactory. Okay, got it. Uh, uh, next question. So also, uh, Sunaina, to add, uh, in off-grid, uh, 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 like we mentioned, the infusion is primary in nature. Uh, we are not taking out any current investors. And uh, currently in off-grid, uh, you have Shell uh, Ventures as an investor. You also have uh, Ankur Capital, which is um, a deep tech investment uh, firm. So these two uh, <coughs> companies are already invested there, and they are also participating in the current round, current series. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my next question is relating to the sulfate of potash vertical. So, uh, the revenue contribution from SOP has been on a declining trend, and as previously mentioned, this was uh, due to production being impacted by a high level of sodium chloride in the raw material. So is this a problem that uh, you foresee going on in the future, where the uh, either the production would sort of stabilize or uh, decrease even more? So I think um, if I can take this question, um, so the SOP, uh, like uh, I think we have said before, um, it's a, a chemistry problem. I think we have solved for it. Um, we are uh, working with our uh, German partners uh, as well as an Australian uh, consultancy now. So we have they've already done the trial test uh, at the lab in Germany. Uh, we are going to be visiting them in the next couple of months for doing seeing the pilot test also. And we will, uh, before the next monsoon, uh, run these tests at a plant scale at our plant uh, in Gujarat. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, whatever modifications and rectifications have to be made will be made. And uh, uh, we continue to remain very uh, uh, bullish on SOP uh, because the product demand is uh, remains firm. And there are very few producers to be able to produce this grade and uh, what I would probably venture to also or risk to say, you know, green grade of SOP, the natural seal brand. So I think you'll, you will definitely hear uh, encouraging news over the next uh, year or so. Uh, okay. And so the CapEx that was also mentioned of about 50 to 75 crores, the, there is no further CapEx being done in like the first, uh, the main three verticals that would be there of bromine, industrial salt, and uh, SOP, right? Uh, it would only be not in the... Not before March. Not before March. And beyond that, uh, mm -hmm. is, there, is the company looking into further expanding the capacities? 
I think at the moment uh, we've already put in uh, uh, money uh, into both the uh, derivatives as well as the ore and hydrocarbon ex- um, acquisition uh, and our uh, main plant in uh, Ranaf Nuts. I think we don't anticipate uh, too much capex in these uh, businesses in after March 25. All right. And uh, my last question is related Anna, to Marjorie. Maybe request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are several other participants waiting for their turn. Uh, okay, thank you so much. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Tushar Ragatate from Kamiakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Mr. Tushar, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. So, and for the opportunity, uh, I just wanted to know like the guidance which you gave on the growing of near to 22,000 metric ton and uh, uh, on the salts of 4.5 million ton. Do you hold that guidance for FY25? Sorry, you're not very clear. Can you repeat that question? Uh, so the guidance uh, of the bromine and the salt business uh, was near to 22 to 25 metric ton, 1,000 metric ton uh, for the bromine and for the salt was 4.5 million ton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so do you hold that guidance for the current financial year? I think uh, give or take, I think uh, there would be a 10% uh, variance, uh, to be honest. Uh, simply because of uh, you know the cyclone uh, etc. Uh, but I believe that uh, you know we will continue to push for whatever we have guided. Okay, sir. And sir, in the salt uh, salt business, uh, like what percentage of a logistic is FOB, uh, FOB and CIF? Like what is the mix? Yeah, Mr. Tushar, uh, so CIF is around five to eight percent and almost 90 percent on FOB. Got it, sir. And sir, in your new energy business, uh, battery storage, uh, so a bromide would be what percentage of the total cost in zinc bromide battery? So, uh, this is, this is something which we have uh, depends on the various trees and also the composition of electrolyte in the battery. So, this answer is not currently available. Uh, fair enough, sir. Uh, okay, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Deepak Saha from KR Choksi Shares and Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, audible? Yes, Mr. Deepak, please proceed with your question. So, uh, um, and, uh, on the outbreak side, the investment that we have done, uh, we have done just one question. It's a pre-revenue company, that's my understanding. So, um, do, do they have any, you know, in, in this particular space, there any, uh, any solution already available or the solution is under discovery currently? And which is where uh, we are trying to run this pilot project. You're asking about the battery uh, project? Yes, yes, on the battery side. The investment we have done in now grid. Okay. Um, I, again, I, I don't know if I understood your question correctly, but I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Um, I think uh, zinc bromide uh, technology is not uh, uh, new in that context. But I think uh, what Osgrid has done and uh, with their technical capability is, is, is found ways to make it one, uh, as we said, you know, uh, in terms of uh, stability, in terms of cost, and in terms of reliability. I think they have uh, discovered something that is unique and possibly the only ones in the world to have done what they've done. Now, I think the idea is to move it to commercial scale demonstration, and I think that's what the pilot plant is meant to do. Okay, and uh, 
Okay, fine. So, so because of this limitation of questions, just one more question. I'll get back on the queue. Um, it's on the Chinese side. Uh, I mean, we are, we are dealing with a lot of uh, Chinese players. So you now recently, I've seen a you know, lot of uh, recovery related stimulus being given on the you know, Chinese front. So any kind of commentary, if you can give, uh, what are the early indications we are picking from? I think we have two of the large uh, players in China who are delivering uh, some of your specialty chemicals. So, if you can just tell you know, highlight that uh, what what is the incremental commentary and trend we are picking from you know, China front. I think you asked me a very global question. Uh, I don't know how many experts there are out there who are trying to still figure out what goes on in China. So, I won't claim to be one of them. Uh, I think from our own little exposure to the Chinese uh, market in terms of what we do, I think the companies we deal with are large, uh, very stable, and they're uh, fundamentally sound. Um, and uh, I think uh, from what our demand uh, is looking like, I think we are continuing to see, uh, see a, a stable uh, demand from our customers. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, prices across all industries, not just chemicals, but I think across all industries, I think uh, it's a bit of a challenge and a bit of a struggle in China, and we will not be any exception to that. But I think, as I may, mentioned in the earlier commentary, that uh, as the market evolves, uh, suppliers, we also have to evolve. But I think uh, we have to keep an eye on the longer term uh, benefits of uh, these relationships. Okay, thank you. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will take that as our last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. We appreciate uh, your support and your patience as your company continues to perform and deliver on its various strategic initiatives. And we continue to be encouraged by your faith in uh, the company and uh, in what we do and showing interest and uh, taking the efforts to reach out to us. In case of any queries, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us or SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. And we look forward to meeting all of you shortly uh, over the next call, over the next few quarters. Thank you. And wish you all uh, a very happy and prosperous New Year and Merry Christmas as well, uh, as we will probably be talking after that in the New Year. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. On behalf of Arcane Chemical Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.